the Nigeria's Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshinbaju. Let's go into the conversation tonight. I have with me here in the studio Mr. Odia Ofemun, an activist, a poet, and a writer, a former private secretary to a late Obafemi Awolo. He's here with me in our Lagos studio. Many thanks for coming on the program. Thank you. And in our Buja studio is a former presidential candidate and a policy analyst, Mr. Gartima Lehman. Many thanks for coming on the program. Let's begin the conversation from here in Lagos. Uh, from what we have seen and the sort of tension we currently experience in the country, how did we get here? We got here by not planning right, by believing in market forces both in economics and in politics, allowing plans we did not make to determine the decisions we make, and to a very large extent, modeling through, as they say, as they say in, a, in, in, a, in, in political science. The truth is, we elect governments without a program of action. The strategies for ensuring that particular policies are implemented are never made known to either members of the political party or to, to the general populace. So we've ended up with a situation where, let's put it straight, when Good Luck Jonathan came to power, his party abandoned him. So we had a, a term of rule in which the president merely acted as if he had a political party. In my view, under the APC, we have a different kind of situation where it is the president that has abandoned his party. On both, on, in, in, in both cases, we have presidents governing without serious political parties. A country without the structure to take proper decisions cannot plan. And when they can't plan, it means the daily run of events push them. It's like the wind blowing paper any which way. And it is as if that kind of, that kind of situation puts all of us in autopilot. Things are happening, but you cannot specifically pinpoint who is in control. It is possible to control the Nigerian situation. It is possible to have a government that has a plan running through 10 years and can monitor and explain to the populace at every stage how the strategies are meeting the purposes. Mm. Uh, it, it, it's given a lot of concern, isn't it, uh, Mr. Femin? You've, uh, uh, you've written quite a lot about Nigeria's political situation. And if we look at the agitations from the south, from the north, the question will be, what exactly has been the problem? Because in political science, you need to be pragmatic. You need to know what exactly is the problem before you really look for the solution. What exactly is the problem? Nigerians have always known the problem. Whenever you asked from 19, 1914 to the present, what kind of a country you, you have, you will hear people saying it is a lopsided arrangement. That lopsided arrangement turns out not to have helped the not which it was supposed to have favored and has not properly helped other parts of the country. Nigerians are very hardworking people. Because we are hardworking people, it is sometimes difficult to see that governments are the only stumbling blocks to Nigeria becoming a properly developed country. If you have a lopsided system created by a foreign colonizer to get a way that is not ours, we on our own ought to sit down and plan how not to let our country merely serve a foreign We've been interest. sitting for several, I mean, we, several times we've had opportunity to sit down. I can, let's put it this way, that we have not really properly sat down. Nigeria is an eminently savable country that nobody has made a proper effort to save. Think of all the, all the constitu constitutional uh, conferences we have had. At each conference, there's always something left open unsolved, which is the real problem. Nobody solves it. Before independence, they refused to create states. They postponed it till when we shall have had independence. That was because if 
states we are created before independence, according to the British, it would have delayed independence. We did not need to worry about whether independence was delayed or not delayed. We needed to solve a problem that will remain a very big one even after independence. Well, you, we you, never you, solved it. You were the secretary to uh, uh, a former federalist, uh, a former nationalist, Obafemi Awolowo. Yeah. In some of his writing, when he talked about federalism, uh, the question is, uh, that moment when we decided that we wanted to be a federalist state, what has gone wrong over the years? It was a great decision. And I think it is still one of the best decisions we've taken in our history to have a federal society. A unitary system simply does not work. I will always said that in Britain before the end of the 20th century, there will be, there will be a division and that Britain would federalize because it was impossible to run a multinational state as a unitary state. And by the end of the 20th century, Britain had started federalizing. In, in Nigeria's case, we federalized. And then after military rule began in 1966, we reversed many of the federal decisions. And we ended up with a situation where the federal government took all the money belonging to the states so that we actually began to have states that cannot pay salaries. It began from the period of the Civil War. Okay, uh, Mr. Fermo, uh, 